Jonesy, season nine, it's good to be back. Sheesh, nearly into double figures, mate. It uh, feels like it's been a really long time. Uh, both of us have had little trips uh, away from um, the great state of Queensland. You know, we're a bit of a freshen up. We're ready to go. Yeah, we, we only talked about those trips for about, I don't know, <laughs> five, ten minutes from memory. Yes. <laughs> Have, you, have the drifters ever travelled overseas? Because, you know, <laughs> I feel like we were talking like they never had. Yeah. But no, we, we had a blast, mate. We had a blast. Yeah, it was good. The Wink Stakes this weekend. Uh, mm. We have we have some opinions. We do, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's a group one, definitely. There's a lot of group one horses in there. But they're all resuming, mate. So it makes it a little bit tricky. But it'll certainly set the tone for the rest of the spring. Yeah, absolutely. We answer some drifter questions. But, of course, we need to welcome back again our wonderful friends at Ned. Yes, uh, the lovely people of Ned's, people at Ned's have come on board for another season. Uh, sure to be a great spring for them. Um, so if you're going to have a little, you know, a little something, something on this weekend, make sure you do it with the good people at Ned's. Uh, you can do everything that you want with them. You can get weird and exotic. There's the same race multis, mm-hmm. which is a great feature that they have as part of the, the punters toolbox. Yeah. And there's also the profiles. Yeah, profiles are huge. Um, had a few few people jump on last weekend to no avail. But <laughs> that's the risk you get in this great game. But, yeah, the profiles, it's it's not too far away. Definitely. So, uh, full steam ahead for Season 9. Let's go. But what are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. I need to ask you a question. Be curious, Drifters. Mr. Brightside fins them up and wins again. Sardozzi wins the Oaks for J. More Baker's delight in Perth. Radina, Radina just won it. I say Tom Kedden won the spring champion in a cakewalk. Without a fight, without a fight, for the Caulfield Cup. Dear, oh dear, what's uh, what's <laughs> happened to you, mate? Because you're in a state, a right state. Oh, drifters, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I just did a real number on myself last night in Toowoomba. <laughs> in Toowoomba. In Toowoomba. Did you bump into the Toowoomba tool man by... I did Richards? not see the tool man. Yeah. Um, they actually had a meeting, a twilight meeting at Toowoomba last night, uh, but didn't punt there, obviously, just because it's incredibly corrupt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so... Much like your soul at the moment, yeah. by the looks of it. <laughs> Fucking, I think I left a horcrux in Toowoomba last night, part of my soul just... Just obliterated. Um, yeah, so Drifters for context, um, it's a Sunday. Uh, it's a bit later than what we typically record on a Sunday mm-hmm. um, because your boy had to make his way back from Toowoomba and plan to leave a lot earlier than what he did. But when you roll in at about 2 a.m., <laughs> oh, that's tough. Oh, just actually just saying that out loud just made me feel even more hungover. Mate, because typically for me, like the second day is almost worse. So it's like you have to front up to, uh, at your nine to five tomorrow. I do, yeah. So you've got to think about that all day. Too. Thanks, thanks for that. Yeah, <laughs> the, literally the only thing keeping me together at this point is one. Like I love horse racing yeah. so much. So yeah. to chat about horse racing when I'm cooked, fine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> like fine. It's, it's actually a joy. <laughs> yeah, it's like yes, yeah, it's, it's like it's sobering. Like you know what I mean. And secondly. Um, where you live in Brisbane, there's uh, there's, oh. a, there's a fine there's a fine military leader who lives nearby, and I'm going to go see him. Uh, he's um, <laughs> he's he's the colonels led the the finest armies, and they typically do their best work on a Sunday. Yeah, after in the after, form of a zinger box. Yeah, <laughs> after they've blown themselves up the, yeah. the day before. Yeah, so I've got that's key for me together, and uh, sitting here with you talking about horse racing is a great joy. So that's literally the the only reason I have a pulse. It could it could be a lot worse, couldn't it? Mm. Now it could be much worse. All right, I'm going to look after you today. Um, let's just get straight into it. Let's hey? just but it, there is a bit to talk about. There is it a lot. A phen- it was a phenomenal day of racing. It was like for the first first day of the I guess spring carnival. Mm. Yeah, it it delivered in spades. It sure did. It delivered in David Spades. Yeah. So the Winks Stakes review, hey? 
Yep. Let's start with the big one. I'm very keen to have the. It typically is a fantastic form reference each year. Yeah, of course. Because very good horses kick off their campaigns yeah, yeah, yeah. there, right? Yeah. But I'm I'm very keen to follow this in. Yeah. I think via yeah. Sustina. We didn't really even give her much of a mention. We thought we'd, we'd see her running on into, say, fourth or fifth. Yeah, I didn't even have her in my top four because, like, there wasn't room for her, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but uh, uh, Drifter Brendan, he was, you know, very keen on VSC scene. So, well done to you, mate. Uh, probably picked her up at a good price, too, because she probably jumped about 10 bucks. And you owe him 50 bucks. I do owe him 50 bucks. So, well done, mate. Um, but it wasn't. You know, it wasn't her taking. It wasn't taking on that bet, being like, "Oh, she's got no chance." No, like, it was um, in the race was, setup. Yeah, it made sense for Zugotcha, right? It made sense for Zugotcha, but it was actually ran a lot at a tempo a lot stronger than what I thought it would. Yeah, be yeah, which yeah. was which is good to see. Absolutely, love to see that. And I guess um, some of the champion. Uh, 2,000 metre horses have kicked off in a race like this and then they've gone on to win Cox Plays uh, later yeah. in the prep. Winks. Winks being the main one. <laughs> Winks being. Aptly named race. Yep. Uh, but where is Via here? She's basically fourth last. She's behind Fangirl um, mm-hmm. at this stage of the race at least. But yeah, Tropical Squall. Tropical Squall. Um, she went out quite hard, I think. Um on Sky, they were saying that they ran about a 10-2 sectional um, early in the race. So, it's really strung out. Yeah. And it basically just, yeah, it, it kind of like warranted, I guess, the best athletes. I think that was Zugotch's chance. What do yeah, you reckon? I think so too. As we kind of alluded to. I think so um, because- it's Such a shame. It's such a shame. It, it is such a shame. She was enormous. Yeah. She was fantastic. Um, Off the back of that speed- Oh, to, like, to hold on like that. She was a sitting duck there yeah. to be beat. And she was, but gee, he took her. It took a, to be honest, a, a terrific ride from K-Mac. Yeah, huge. And, a, and, a, and an engine <laughs> yeah, to get yeah. the job done. Because look at Fangirl. You, you're thinking at this point, she's just going to run past him. No, nah, Zoo, Zoo held on really strongly. Mm. Yeah, and by this stage, I'm like, oh, yeah, V is just going to run over her. But she just kept sticking her neck yeah. out. And then past the post... Yeah, Via just looked even Visa better. One. Yeah. And it's, it's interesting, right? Because so early she was behind Fangirl. I reckon this is the winning move. And there was there was another another shot on Twitter that I saw. Mate, it, it doesn't look like they're that far off the fence, but they're a long way off the fence. Yeah. They're like five lanes off yeah. the fence. It was off yeah, they were off the fence all day, mostly. Yeah. Which Kieran in his post post match, I guess, um, mm. was saying like, oh, yeah, the rail wasn't exactly the best ground, but um, it was definitely dried out by then, and it was like it was fine. Yeah. So I think it might have been overplayed, but huge ride. And I was just trying to see there as well where he actually. So he went. Just trying to see here about the six hundred. He made the winning move. I reckon. Yeah. Just made up a few lengths, got about a length in front of Fangirl entering the straight. Probably saved. A ton of ground back on the inside. Yep. As well. And yeah, Fangirl was probably a length of behind her there with about 300 meters to go and it proved to pretty much be the winning margin. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I guess on that as well, the reason why I was keen on Zagosha in the race is because, like you said, it's set up for her and she's got the tactical speed that, that Fangirl and Via Sistina don't. Um, but I tell you what, like, if 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 you put Fangirl and Via Sistina in a match race over over a mile, like I, I couldn't possibly have Fangirl over her based on that race specifically. Yeah. Right track, mm-hmm. Ranwick for Fangirl, good deck, drying mm-hmm. deck, J Mac on. Like, are you taking v, are you taking her over Via Sistina over a mile probably with the not. exact same setup? Yeah, probably. she she had everything that she needed. And they, Via Sistina ran one one hundredth of a second quicker home. So, they basically run an identical last 600 metres. Yeah. So, Fangirl's run out of her skin considering the layoff that she's had. Mm. The concern for me, for her, is a bit of the second up syndrome mm-hmm. off that really light autumn preparation as well. So, 
especially at the price she's going to be, she's going to be about three to three fifty. That's the thing, like equal for both of them, and and that's and that's what, for me like the the punters love fangirl because she's a fantastic horse. She's never been one of mine because you know where she's going to be in the running, and you're not going to get a price that's backable. No. Like she to win yesterday, she was less. It was like two dollars forty or something like that. And Zoe got, you know, a bit of money came for Zoe, but she was $2, $2.20 to place. It's like, well, where's the, where are you better off spending your money? Yeah, one by three for Zoe. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, V Sistina, terrific. Zagotcha was tough, difficult to place now. Um, yeah. and, and Fangirl was brilliant as well. Um, Mate, there was some other really smart runs in behind as well here. I want to highlight... Uh, well, Chris Waller training a trifecta in the winks, like he would have absolutely adored that, um, especially with some of those being having far bigger targets in mind. Yeah, detonator jack off a high high pressure speed. Yeah, was fantastic. I think he finished fifth. Samana three wide, uh, she was great. But I loved loved the runs of Z- Zardozzi and Riff Rock. Yeah. Yeah, with um, with cups in in mind, you'd think Zardozzi's uh, Zardo Zardozzi was the one that. She's put on 40 kilos in the off-season. Jesus. So, she was fat as a bus yesterday. And she her last her last furlong was, I think, it, she let out of condition. But yep. I, she, one to follow. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Especially considering, thinking back to her spring last year, it took her about four runs to get going. Mm. Like, and as soon as she got, she got that match fitness going, she was virtually unbeatable. Yeah. And we saw her have two- Three actually fantastic runs at Flemington. Yeah, a Melbourne Cup for me twenty six dollars. She is in that market. Yeah, I don't. I of a local chance. I don't mind that. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is good. We need we need more um, locals inserted into our staying ranks. Um, yeah, the run on Riff Rocket like he was just like a trial run, wasn't it? Well, Toby Prinus said Riff Rocket looked like he was playing up. What were your thoughts? Yeah. He probably just a bit raced a bit keenly because he's probably um, fat as a bus still, yeah. a bit underdone. Um, you know he'll sharpen up both after that, and um, I, I hope he's heading towards the cups. I don't. I hope Chris Waller doesn't pull a Chris Waller and say, "Oh yeah, we're, we're taking him to a an Golden. Epsom and then a Golden Eagle." Yeah, no, nah. that'd be disgusting behaviour. Turnbull is his race, I reckon. Yeah, I reckon that would be set away some penalties. It'll be yeah. interesting to see what he gets, but um, yeah. No, yeah, look, she set the tone for the spring, didn't it? Yeah. Uh, I thought he was a fantastic run. Um, he was, had the fourth fastest last 600 metres of the race behind Via Sistina, Fango, and a tissue. So, it's like he's run out of his skin yep. for me. Um, Nash wasn't too happy after the race. <laughs> what did Nash say? Uh, he was like, I was just really frustrated with how that race was run. It's like, <laughs> bruh. You got a two thousand twenty five hundred meter horse under under. You. He's not going to be winning this anyway. No, he's not. And, and what would he get in a in a Caulfield Cup like fifty five? Yeah, probably two would, time Derby winner. As it stands right now, would you rather have him or Warmonger in a Caulfield Cup? Warmonger. Yeah, I'd say. Yeah, Shape, shaping up to be a good race. Mm, yeah, after a, a few a few years of um, inconsistency, I'd say last year's was a good addition. Obviously, yeah. with without a fight, Durston. <laughs> Um, incentivize incentivize so two of the last three have been fantastic yeah true um, trop- yeah, we have to talk about tro- rock- tropical squall wow. wow. tropical dross <laughs> tropical dross <laughs> well, she's a difficult one to place too now isn't she yeah she is and I think I want I would like you if you could please just remind the listeners and me because I need to listen to this as well <laughs> and I kind of I'm I'm stuck in two minds with Zardozzi because she's an early season four-year-old mare. Mm. What's your theory? My theory is that um, I don't think the four-year-old mares are treated awfully well in wait for, once they transition to wait for age. I think it takes them at least at least six months, definitely a year, to to get to a point where they're actually um, more of a more of a betting prospect. Unless they're a star, obviously. I think I think it takes them a year to sort of fully furnish like. Like if you put Zugotra in that race this time last year, like she doesn't run as boldly as what she did just then. No way. Um, she's five now. Uh, fangirl, the transition from four to five, like she became a, a true weight for age. And her best, stalwart. Her best run of that early four-year-old season was nearly winning a, and a golden eagle at the end of the prep. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. Against her, against her own age. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I just think I just think you just need to be wary when you when you're backing these these newly, I guess, new season mares. new season mares. Um, when I guess that sort yeah. of wait for age, like I'd much rather back them in <laughs> in um, the handicap sort of races or, or against their own sex. Yeah. So me liking Zardozzi for a Melbourne Cup, that that's that's okay. You might come a little bit too soon for Zardozzi, <laughs> <laughs> but she's very good. I, I like her. Uh, Tropical Squall. Tropical was Squall also, was also one hour five lane. Oh, was so, she? Yeah. An excuse there, but I like I really like Tropical Squall because you know where she's going to be and she's going to make these races more truly run. Yep. I like her. She's a good horse. Yes. I don't think she's a group one winner in waiting. I think, um, I think um, you know, <laughs> I, I think she's uh, she's one that could, you know, potentially be a group one horse. Oh, like, my God. <laughs> just like with she's already got two. So. We'll touch on that in a moment, <laughs> but just- because we're talking about these uh, these middle distance horses, basically your mate Brandon, Brandon Francis. Yeah, well done, Brandon. Uh, it- Unless he dates. Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> He's already collecting the fucking check. Mate, I asked right. for it. Yeah. All right, Brandon. <laughs> Look, Brandon. How about this? Do you want to do double or nothing? No. <laughs> oh, hello, hello. Uh, all right. He's got a question for us. Yeah. Is this year's potential Cox Plate field the best in recent memory? <laughs> There's been a lot of locals in recent years, and if you have a look at the Cox Plate market, and I've got basically the top eight chances with one or two more locals thrown in. How's this for a field? Via Sistine is now the favourite. Yeah, four dollar fifty. Yeah, uh, Pride of Jenny's second favourite. Prognosis, who's run second to Romantic Warrior, the Japanese horse, in yeah. the last two QE2 um, cups in Hong Kong. Backmarker. So it's like he's going to have he's going to be the one that really wants that pace in it. Um, absolutely destroyed Dubai Honor. That's the that's the form reference, he's right? A, he's a, a, a in his national wait for age horse. Yes, yeah. and and a Japanese, which they pretty much confirmed that he's going to be here. We love the Japanese. Oh, I, <laughs> I can't believe I didn't back Oban Burimai yeah. last year. So, anyway, yeah. uh, broad sighting as a light, lightly weighted three year old. Yeah, Fangirl probably. You know, deserves her place there. Absolutely. August wrote in. He's not, gonna, <laughs> he's not coming, surely not. Mate, he's, he's either coming for a Cox Plate or there's uh, there's a few options for him, like the Ark and that sort of thing. But also- is he? He's known for the Cox Plate, is he? Known for the Cox Plate, known for the Caulfield Cup as well. Six-time Group 1 winner. Aiden O'Brien trained horse. Yes. Yeah. So, he's- I think he beat City of Troy before the uh, Epsom Derby, didn't he? I'm not sure. Maybe. I'm not sure. Is he is he a three year old or is he mm, maybe not? Is he a four year old? Might have got that wrong. Anyway, six time Group One winner. So he's good. He's very good. <laughs> so he's in the market. Whether he comes here, Docklands. I actually saw this horse in the uh, Queen Anne over at Royal Ascot. Is that you the reckon? one OTI bought? Yeah, yeah. Ran second behind uh, Charon or whatever his name was. So he's a, he's, a, he's a good chance. Yeah, he's a good chance. I think he's yeah. I think he's uh, got a few in front of him. So he's mm. about a fifteen dollar chance at this stage. Still. Mr. Brightside, who was stiff not to win it last year. Yeah, true. At the Valley, where he absolutely yeah, rose like, like a greyhound. greyhound. Yeah. And then uh, the other one I just thought of, like thinking of Zardozzi, I'm like, well, who was gapping her? Or Kestrel. They were saying that they were aiming her towards a cosplay. I don't know where she is. She trialed, I think, this week in New Zealand. She's more of a 2,000 meter horse for mine. So she could easily make that field too. It's a good field. It's a really good field. Oh, f- Romantic have- Warriors not coming. Oh, I, so I was literally about to say I would love to have seen the champ um, back up again because, oh, like he I, I, he did it last year and he wasn't he wasn't right. No, um, and that that would make the Cox Plate you'd think probably um, right up there with with the highest rating race mm-hmm. in the world mm-hmm. if he came over, especially. Mm-hmm. But no, it looks that looks phenomenal. I would have loved to have seen um, militarized go around again. Um, I don't think Celestial Legend's not going to go there. I think he's probably doing the right thing and avoiding that field and going to the Golden Eagle and just cashing that check. Yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's a hell of a field. Yeah. So yeah. I think in recent memory, I think it's right up there because we don't have our weight for age stars there. Alligator Blood last year. Mr. Mm. Mr. Brightside's kind of had a not an icky year, just not as good a year. Yeah. When was the last time we saw a three year old filly in the Cox Plate? Yankee Rose, maybe? Yeah. Or ran second to, yeah. to Winks? Yep. Because, you know, broadsiding is obviously the one, but 
Sometimes a three-year-old bursts onto the scene a little bit, and and um, I have I have my reservations about these three-year-old films. Do you? Off the yeah. times and figures that they ran yesterday, so we may as well go into that, right? <laughs> so, four four uh, twelve hundred meter races on the day, yeah. right? So. Amina and the three-year-old fillies were the slowest of the four. Yeah. And bunch finished as well. And there was a... What was there? There was a midway and a benchmark 78 in the last. So, it's like... That was actually a good win by that thing in the last. Yeah. what it was called. Yeah, it yeah. was. Um, Amina's victory was very, like, visually... It was amazing, right? Yeah. Um, but... Like her her last two hundred meter sectionals were actually pretty average, so I don't think those and they the way it was run, Jolly Stars race was the slowest to the six hundred, but she's basically just absolutely smashed the clock, smashed the clock. Like yeah. and J Mac was a kilo over, <laughs> was he? Yeah, he had fifty five instead of fifty four. Yeah. she's a Group One winner in waiting, <laughs> <laughs> going all over the place here. But Corey Brown. Needs a genuine <laughs> slap over the face. You need a smack bottom, Corey. Like after after that, he's like, oh, gee, that was a win. That was a really nice win. You don't see J-Mac like give him a pat like that. No, nah, she's a group one winning uh, mare in waiting. It's like, uh, Corey, <laughs> she's already won the 1,000 uh, guineas in Melbourne, mate. Yeah. And uh, and she's she's won a group two. Yep. Uh, and and that, that was her seventh start. So... Never been she, outside of the Quinella. Yeah, like so she, she's we know she's good, mate. Yeah, like, she's very good. Like we know she's good. Like I think she won that flight uh flight say that thousand guineas um as a three year old and was still learning a craft. Yeah. Like yeah, just the go for her as well. Like when she firmed from like three fifty into like two whatever she was, like you knew. And, and it the was market knew. It was three fifty. Basically, as soon as the exception, like the scratchings were finalized, bang, two dollars forty. Yeah, like pretty much immediate. And yeah. then she remained that figure. She might have got out to about two fifty. Um, yeah, but she was. Oh, if you're having a look on stories in the morning, your boy was two from two. <laughs> so that was nice. But um, yeah, she was fantastic. She so yeah, that race was compared to the other three. Um, 1,200 meter races on the day. They were three to six and a half lengths slower to the 600 meters. Uh, but this race was two and a half lengths quicker overall. Right. So that three year old Philly race, that Amina one, your boy was on. Yeah. Um, so put a line through that. Do you think the autumn glow forms better for the heading towards a, a flight stakes? Well, well, that was my, that was what I've had a look at, right? First start last week in a, in a midweek, benchmark 72 over 1,300 meters. Daughter of the Autumn Sun, but has to do it all in one prep as well. Yeah. Like that, I, I'm on record. I don't like that. But I also don't know what the upside of Amina is and the, the the rest of these fillies. But I don't know. I just looked at that last 200 meter sectional and like the wink stakes field were blowing them away basically. And they were running over a furlong further. Okay. So, jury's out. Jury's out for me. Um, so... And you can kind of see that with the market. Like, Amina's maybe like se- uh, second or third or fourth favorite. Manal's still like ahead of her. Manal was a good return, but I don't know. I kind of... Jury's out for me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, when you see a bunch finish like that and, and if the if the clock doesn't back it up, then yeah. Yeah. you you got to see him again. Yeah. So, Jolly Star though. Oh, her last 600 meters was eight to 10 lengths quicker than the other 1200 meter races. Uh, and so that's considering the J-Mac wasn't riding her out. No. And it was a kilo over. It is one of the best performances that, uh, that I've seen mm. from like so early in a preparation with such hot, such like buzz and hype around a horse. She backed it up. Mm. Yeah. Usually you can leave that, <clears throat> leave races like that a little bit disappointed. Um, and sometimes they can win and you're still like, okay, yeah, she won, but. But that was the that was the win of um, a horse who's got bigger fish to fry, and what I really liked about her is you see her in the yard, mm. so chilled, yeah, like super professional. She just gets it, yeah, super professional. She's a race horse, leaves it all out on the on the track, um, and when she came back uh, and J Mac took his saddle off, literally stood there as still as a statue. 
she's a racehorse. Um, and I tell you what, um, Zoo Star, yeah, he's he's making waves. Like it, like yeah, he's he's a two hundred fifty thousand dollars service, you know, stallion. So clearly, clearly, like bros, bros, good. Um, but I tell you what, with his with his mm. little fillies that he's producing, mm. like keeping an, keeping an on them. Mm. Um, that sort of twelve to fourteen hundred meter distance range, they're just yeah, they're just really high quality. So her last two, uh, her last six hundred meter sectional of the race was a thirty two seventy one, right? So Via Sistina and Fangirl clocked a clocked a thirty two ninety eight. So it's basically a length and a half quicker than those those mares. Obviously, a few things in her favour. Furlong, uh, furlong, like mm. less in distance, mm-hmm. obviously, and then two kilo swing. Yeah, but she's she's putting the time on the clock, right? And she wasn't even pushed. Yeah, she wasn't even pushed, and she and and she's so much better than that field that she beat, like so much better. And Elder, like Geldings in there yeah. as well, which I love to see for a three year old. Yeah. Like there was some decent, like you know, listed to Group Three sprinters in there. Two. Group one winners in there as yeah, well. Yeah, Southport Tycoon and Griff was in there as well, and and she's got the tactical gate speed as well. It's like she she can sit in the first third, which is so critical. And and, and if I was going to be critical of Chris Waller, is that not enough of his horses do that? Yeah. Um, but yeah, she was in the perfect position. World's her oyster. Um, can she win an Everest? I think she can based on that. Um, but maybe she'll be better out to fourteen hundred meters. I think you might see her do the. I I wouldn't even be surprised if she just they keep her fresh, go towards an Everest now. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because the way that Wallet, I think that's been his concern is like she needs she needs the ground, but because there was the eleven hundred meter option and the twelve hundred, and he's like, well, she's she's basically a miler that is a very good sprinter as well, mm. sprinter miler, you might say. Um, Need to she needs the she needs every bit of the twelve hundred meters to like show her absolute best. So they take a fresh into an Everest. She could be the first one to do the Everest Golden Eagle double. Yeah, yeah, she's very good. It was wow. so so good to see. Just yep. love to see it. Yep, do love to see that. A couple of questions about Jolly Star from Azo. What do you make of Jolly Star's Group One winner? At, she's a Group One winner at the mile, sprint well in the Arrowfield, and yesterday Everest. We've kind of already touched on that. Uh, Josh Buttonshaw was Jolly Star's win greater than Stephen Bradbury winning gold for the for the nation. <laughs> Hold your horses, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Bradbury of Last Man Standing fame. Yeah. Oh, it was a hell of a win. I think you just you keep your powder dry though. If she if she can win an Everest, then you're like, oh, we've got a superstar here. Yeah. Um, or even if she runs like a top three in an Everest, she's so, so lightly raced. Mm. And she, and tactical speed. Tactical speed. And she's a four-year-old, so she's mm. just going to get better and better and better. Yeah. So do you reckon she, at that wa- at a wave for age contest like the Everest, right, early season four-year-old, is she the one that can kind of buck that trend? Yeah. It's it's It's... it's it's a general rule that I that I keep, but there's there's it, some that buck the trend. She's one that can. There's exceptions to every. There's rule. exceptions to every rule, and she can be one. Hundred percent, she can. Um. Yeah, gee whiz. She's done it in Sydney. She's done it in Melbourne. She's just professional. Professional hasn't missed the Quinella. Very good. Very very very. And good. you know we've seen her win in a couple of different ways now. Like put a field away like that. Last start, Jamie Carr. You know, first up in an hour field against horses having their grand final, mm-hmm. and she's she's she finds a way to win. Great ride by Jamie Carr that day, but through traffic, like yep. so, she's you know she's, she's, she's a racehorse. Wa- she wants to go through those gaps. Yeah, she's a racehorse. Now another, I, I hope you saw this. Another another horse has put their hand up. Hey, I'm an Everest contender. Kai Mochi for Gary Portelli. <laughs> <laughs> first run for you long, and Gary's gone. Hey, she's an Everest contender. How delusional is Gary? <laughs> Pretty delusional. <laughs> <laughs> like that was a good tough win, Kamachi, but she's she's a she's a group horse. She's not a group one horse. So I just want to break down how delusional Gary is, right? <laughs> Come on, Gary. They would have only beaten the highway field on raw times by three lengths. And she had fifty four kilos, I believe. And it's like who'd she beat? I was on commemorative, just so you know. She I 
There was a lot of people liking commemorative as their best of the day. She doesn't put it together yet. Best of the day? That's ridiculous. Yeah. That best of the day, please. Yeah. I saw others saying Fango was their best of the day. That was silly. That was silly. Mate, like, there, was, there, was, there was Jolly Star and there was, for me, Elias. Elias. And he, he drifted out a little bit. He did, yeah, and I waited, which yeah, is great. Yeah, so did I. Of course. Mate, I'll tell you what, like, it was a good day for us yesterday. It was a good start. <laughs> it was a good start for us. Yeah. And and the victim had a few sick beats. Yep. But came home with a wet sail, which is the most important thing. Yes. Well, you know, we were I reckon we're none for a hundred at, at, yeah, at lunch. Yeah. 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 You know. Like you've hit a few out of the park. Yeah. I'm just I'm just scratching along. I'm on thirty. Yeah. Pa- played a, <laughs> played Mr. Couple. Yeah. I'm on thirty. Not out. I'm not out yeah. though. Well, I was actually I was I was giving out LBW, but I just got a feather on it. Tropical squall. <laughs> <laughs> Tropical squall. Ooh. I tell you what, like, um, I was, I was given out with Zoo Gotcha, um, mm. but reviewed. Yeah, and yeah, it's just missing, just missing the stumps. Yeah. But if she won, tell you what, yeah. <sighs> just pitched outside like. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Um. So yeah, Ranwick. Um. Anything else from Ranwick that we need to cover? Well. With? Elias, Elias, Elias. Yep. Um, Metropolitan, well done. Well, so the good people at Neds, not other not other bookies don't let you do this, but the good people at Neds do. So what I did, and I shared it on my profile. So if you're sh- looking at my profile, you'll see it. Basically, if you have a horse running on the weekend and then you want to double down in the futures market as well, you do take a bit of a haircut. So it's not the true odds of what it would have pay- be yeah. paying, but you do get- some odds, but some other bookies don't actually do that. So, yeah, because they're fucking shit. Yeah, <laughs> compared, put, to, compared to the good people in there, of course. Uh, <laughs> put that so I put that on my profile. I think it was about 12 to 1 or so. Yeah, yeah. So, Eli- Elias, is it Elias? Elias, Elijah, <laughs> Elijah Wood, yeah, Elijah Wood, uh, is now five dollar favorite in the uh, Metro, Metro. So and during the week as well, I put his his first up run in Melbourne was pretty. It was disappointing last week. Yeah, Pericles. Yeah, but I think he's a Sydney horse. Could he could he do the Epsom a year after I said he was going to do the Epsom, mate? I put Elias, Elias, and um, Pericles, Pericles double for the uh, at a hundred to one. So that's good shopping. It is good shopping. Really good shopping. So because Pericles is still about about fifteen dollars, I'd say in yeah. that market. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah, typical Godolphin. They'll send them into state, get them prepped up, get them ready, get them back to the big smoke for the big dance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, he's a funny horse, Pericles. He is. <laughs> he's a funny horse. I reckon he's he's very well in in that yep. Epsom. I think. Yeah. Um, and the last couple like handicap miles have been a bit. Yeah, they have been. Yeah, like oh. Celestial Legend was good. Anyway, so Elias was very good. Benchmark 78 grade. I've had a look at this horse, Midatsu. Mm. Third win in Australia from four starts. Kiwi horse, isn't it? Far better than Benchmark 78 grade. Oh, yeah. Had a look at Racing Australia. He's, he's non for the Caulfield Cup. I, don't, I think that's a stretch. Yeah. He's 100 to 1 in that market, but- in Sydney, there's a very winnable Metropolitan as well. He's twenty six dollars in that market. I think that could I could interest that. I think Madatsu is one that I'm keen to follow this prep for sure. Yeah, yeah, first that was up, a really smart win. First up over a mile was, yeah, he brained him. Yeah, yeah, way better than them. Uh, Mornington Glory, well found. Yes, um, I think it's just just reading. It's one of those ones where you just read the race. Like there was a lot of talk about Bolpa Steel and the lightweight and. You know, she's, what, five from six in her career to date. But you just look at the race map and there was so much pressure and she rarely had that in her previous races. And also, she was so well placed last prep. You know, this was, you know, the lights were shining. They were shining too bright for her. Um, whereas Mornington Glory, a bit of a tougher old gelding, wasn't first up, you know, stalk to speed. Mm. Stalk to speed, have a crack at him in the last 50 metres, and get over the top of them. That's exactly what happened. Yes. And Ethan Brown's been riding well at the moment. He has. He's been striking nearly 20%, I think. Mm. Well, sort of 50 to 100 rides. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, that was good. Um, photograph was, <laughs> was a sick beat, mate. It was. That was a sick beat. It was. 
Like, Jamie Carr, when are you going to press the button? She pressed the button. I was like, you press it too late, Jamie. Yeah. So, Jamie Jamie put a hand up. Yeah. Said, you know, it wasn't my best, but, you know, that- they're not robots, mate. They're not going to get it right no, this not. time. No, they're not. So it was a sick beat, but I wasn't. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't too upset. Yeah. Um, but the the one that just didn't make any sense was see what I see. Nothing in the stewards' report. Yeah. So I, I, I was like, surely she's got like a you know, yeah, going to pull up lame or heart whatever. She, maybe she had like a virus in in yeah. the off season or something. She just didn't come up. But this, from what I read in the stewards' report, Danny O'Brien was like, "Yep, she was ready to go yesterday. Step up in grade." Maybe, but like, yeah, I think something will surely come out there. Yeah. Yeah. So she's one where, like, if she's a backable price next start, like, I would dive in again and you forgive. But if she fails again, then it's like, okay, cool. Yep. Don't, don't back again first. Yeah. Need group. to, need to just wait to the autumn, basically. Do you know what's insane? How, how she, how well in she was in Caulfield Cup markets. Remember when, when she, she strung mm-hmm. a couple together in the autumn and we were just like, that is absolutely ludicrous. Mate, I, what did I see? What market was it? Um, let me find this. Jolly Star in the Cox Plate. It's like ten dollars. She's not going to head there. <laughs> it's, it's 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 insanity. Like ridiculous stuff. It's it's the futures markets. Not not at all bookies, but at some are absolutely cooked, mate. We call it how we see it. We do. We call out the good people in Nevs as they could be doing better. Yeah. Because for on the whole, they do very well. They do very well. <laughs> they do very well. <laughs> But honestly, like futures markets are well and truly cooked. Yeah. Um, we should probably we should probably do a futures preview, I reckon, um, yeah. at some point. Yeah, well, we'll probably yeah we'll have to do September very soon. But there's only one a week, so we could probably do it from next week. Yeah. Um, now, uh, <coughs> stewards reports. So, uh, Creon in the highway had a poor recovery for Danny O'Brien. That's when stable made of atmospheric rock. Um, uh, tropical squall. Tropical said, squall. Uh, <laughs> off four leg, one hour five lame. Lady Laguna was also uh, lame, one hour five. Uh, Flying Sultan in the last um, had a poor recovery and coughing as well. And then in at Mooney Valley, there was a couple shock over fracture. Uh, shock over was fractious in the barriers. Um, and then Raikoki was lame in the left four mm. as well. In the extra two race. That was a smart win by extra two. Great mm. ride by Blake Shin. Mm-hmm. Just got there. Yeah. And they have here follow-ups. See what I see. Mm. I would hope so. Yes. So, next week, what have we got? Let's have a look. The Memsey. Memsey. Ooh, that's an interesting uh, little race, actually. Mr. Brightside versus Pride of Jenny. Mm-hmm. Definitely is. <coughs> um would have loved to have seen those two in the wing stakes. Oh, my God. Uh, but, you know, you can't have everything. Because then, it, then it, like, all the discussion, right, about it being, like, should it be a group one contest? It's like, yeah, mm. I think it should be. If you have those two there as well, yeah. oof, like, actually earn your keep. Yeah. So, prior to Jenny, 250 Mr. Brightside, 350 Antino, $8. Mm. A tissue, 15 surely not. Pericles, 15s. Southport Tycoon, 17s. Tuvalu, same price. Amenable uh, Estriella. And Gentleman Roy, who's a winning machine at the moment, is 21s. He's going super. He's going super. V8, uh, and that's pretty much the field. Mm. Top two in the market. <clears throat> yeah, I think so. Um, I think if right side's going to get Jenny, it's this in the MZ. Yeah. For mine. Caulfield as well. Yeah, if he's going to do it, yeah. I um, but like I just, you know, where part of Jenny's going to be, and if Declan Bates just absolutely lets her rip, um, like she'll turn into a sprint mate, <laughs> like yeah, so uh, you'd, you'd be a, a brave man to take her on. And we did. It was something I was highlighting at the um, start of well, in the autumn is Mister Brightside lost that tactical speed early mm. in his races. He was coming from way far back and it's it's a credit to how good he is mm. because he was like picking up and still winning. But yeah, if he does that again, it's going to make it awfully hard. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know what the sta- uh, the, the trainers would have done, the Hayes boys in the in the break, but like yeah, Pride of Jenny just got his measure. 
Mm. Um, and yeah, he's he's just got to sit closer. Mm. But could it just bust him up? I don't know. 1,400 meters might be the one where he can actually just keep with her. I don't, I don't, I don't yeah. know. And I think we'll have a look at it, obviously. But like Caulfield, I'd want to see what her what her form is there. But she's a different racehorse. Yeah. In the I think, last 12 I think, months. I think you honestly, you don't look at her form prior to this time yeah. last year. Um, but the thing with her is she could draw the widest gate. doesn't matter. Whereas if Brightside draws the widest gate, it's like massive disadvantage. Yeah, yeah, true. So mm. she's yeah, she's pretty she's pretty bomb proof. Like yeah. you back you're backing her, probably knowing she's she's not going to finish outside the top three. Mm. No way in hell. Mm. Whereas Brightside, yeah, he's probably not going to finish outside the top three. Probably not. Well, he was it when the Memzi or it might have been the Or was that a. Uh, yeah, it was the prep that he won the uh, All Star Mile mm. at Sandown. Yeah, and because um, Jack and I won that, right? Against Gentleman Roy. Yeah, <coughs> I think Jack and I won the Or, and then Brightside won the Futurity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he, but he was kicked off in the Or. I'm pretty sure, and he finished like fifth behind him. Was it that race? Is that the I'm prep sure. I'm, I'm thinking not, of? I'm not anyway. sure. Anyway, doesn't matter. He runs well fresh over 1,400 He does. Meters. He does. He's, he's got a few 1,400 meter group ones. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all she wrote. You, you take care of yourself, all right? Yeah, I'll be all right. Okay. I'll be all right, Drifters. Thanks. Don't worry about me. Yeah. Um, we will see you on Wednesday. See you Wednesday.